Welcome back to the channel you guys. Uh, what's been going on? Well, we're going to talk you through a few tips and tricks that sort of been going on this week. Not many flying shots, so not a lot of action, but there's a, there's a little bit in here, so don't you worry. But we're looking at some different transmitter mounting methods uh, that the boys are doing. A little bit of how to keep the birds fit, especially if you're one of those people that's, you know, you work sort of nine till five through the winter and you get the weekends off. You're not going to fly a very good hawk two days a week, but there are ways to at least help you, at least help you um, build some fitness into that bird after work in the dark winter's evenings if you can put the effort in and be bothered. Um, if you graft all week and you come home after a cold day and you sit down with a cup of tea, you know what it's like. Very difficult to re-motivate yourself to get out and do something. If you want to practice falconry well, you've got to do that something one way or the other for sure. Enjoy the video. Um, the boys, are, as you watch this, are heading off to Yorkshire, which is a fair away from us. And they're going to have a couple of days hawking on invite. Uh, some rock rabbits, sort of, you know, rabbits that are going to be probably put up by the dog rather than the ferret. Rabbits that lie out in cover. Uh, they're looking forward to that. As mentioned, a couple of weeks now for me, the work's getting in the way. There'll be nothing from me uh, with the eagle for two weeks. And then, of course, we're going to have at least a week getting him back round because he's probably going to put on a little bit of weight over the next sort of couple of weeks for sure. What else can I tell you? Um, flying shots. As already mentioned, really, I think we need something like a GoPro on the head. And what I, what I was about to invest in was a really top... Well, an entry level film quality drone. So a really good drone for filming to try and get some side on shots, some aerial shots, because anyone knows that flies birds, the worst view of the slip is the falconer's view, watching everything go away from them. Side on, you get to see much more of the action and how it plays out for sure. Uh, financially, things yeah, not gone quite right there. Uh, that money earmarked, as you guys know, you earmark money, you save a bit of money up, life throws something at you and it drains all your finances but but we'll get there we'll get there so don't worry but enjoy this video next week's video completely different it's going to be more of a almost a podcast kind of thing and it's going to be debating or talking about full career and display full career that's for next week but enjoy this video and these videos the journals a couple of weeks and they will continue and subscribe Hi guys, um, ahead of uh, rabbit hawking in Yorkshire this weekend, um, Dad's asked me to do a quick video on doing jump ups with Zara, the female Harris's hawk. Um, the clues in the name really, all I'm doing is asking her to jump up to the glove for a small piece of food, go back down, jump back up. Um, the concept of this sort of work is two things that, that, that sort of um, you achieve simultaneously. The first one is just repetitive recall work. Um, I am quite a nervous person when I fly away from home, so I like to know that my bird is recalling really, really well. Um, and secondly, we've been out lamping, um, hair hawking, and ferreting rabbits with the hawks for a couple of weeks now, and they're doing really, really well. Um, we know that that sort of drive um, to uh, to catch their own food is there, um, but they're having too much success, which sounds really big-headed, but we're not getting the flights in uh, that we need um, to get these birds really built up, really fit um, at the start of the season. Um, for example, the last four nights that we've been out lamping. Tom has caught a rabbit, first slip. Um, so his first flight of the night, he's killed. You're not gonna get a hawk fit doing that. Um, Zara on the other hand, uh, what was it? Monday night, 
she probably had 20 flights, really hard pumping flights into the wind. Um, and I could hear her breathing a little bit harder um, and she was certainly getting out of breath from, from repetitive flying. Um, Tom, because he, his fourth night on the trot, he'd killed first slip. He went for another, caught that rabbit. So that's two, two flights. Um, the third one, he, uh, he caught again. So three flights for three rabbits. There's only so much trading off to go for another that you can do. Um, luckily his, his fourth one, I think, um, he missed. Tom wanted to catch one more just to give that bird a full full crop as a, as a reward on a rabbit. And his fifth flight, he caught his fourth rabbit. So these birds aren't getting really fit ahead of ready to go to, to Yorkshire, really. Um, it's a long journey for us, three to four hours driving. We want to make the most of it and have really, really fit, strong birds. Um, so this week we could go out lamping. Um, but we're obviously not getting the fitness work there and we run the risk of having our burrs, our weight management off from uh, giving our hawks a good fill on the rabbits. Um, Zara has been sort of making a kill one day and the next day she's having a fast day um, and the day after that she's back out hunting again and she's killed again and that cycle has been continuing. Um, that was great, we're on Wednesday today. So Zara made a kill Monday night. Uh, Tuesday night, she was still three ounces heavier than the, the time I flew on Monday night because it was 22 degrees Celsius randomly yesterday. So with the weather being so um, up and down, uh, I've decided I'm not gonna hunt the remainder of this week um, and just do jump up work. Um, so I'll turn the camera around, I'll show you the setup, it's a little bit crude, um, I've just moved house fairly recently so I uh, still need to um, get all my bits and bobs together really, but I'll show you it, give you an idea of the setup and then uh, I'll do a quick clip of, of Zara working doing the jump ups for a good oh. start. Um, step ladder, what we need, I've got a, a perch. So what we're not doing is teaching the bird to go to the floor for its reward. Um, really frustrating, really bad habit for a hawk to get into, to leave the glove, go and sit on the wet ground, um, and then expect to have a, a, a tidbit for doing that. Um, it's inconvenient, um, but it's also really frustrating when someone's hawk does that um, and gets a really wet tail or wet, wet wing feathers um, from landing on wet wet ground or wet crop. So we've got a perch there, using a bow perch. She never sits on a bow perch at home. Um, it's just a training tool. And then I've got some, some thicker rope. You can do this with a Korean slime. It really doesn't matter. Um, like I said, it's really crude. I've just set it up quickly. I've come home from work and it's getting dark. Um, so I've got a, a relatively thick piece of rope really. Um, but it's just that added extra weight for her. And I've tied that off to the bow so she can't get over next door's fence because a lot of this work I've been doing at home. Um, just, just time really, it's just hard. Um, so the whole concept is she flies up from the bow perch up to my glove. She'll hop back down, do it again. And what you're looking for is instead of having that ladder well away from the, uh, the bow perch, you're trying to get it as vertical as possible. So if you look here now, that hawk is having to fly pretty much vertically um, to get up and down, which is, is, is difficult for a hawk to do, and it's difficult for it to do it 20 times. Um, but it, it's that constant beating of the wings to get up that we're looking for. The same as how I was using the rope to be dragged through the, the long grass last year for Zeus, the golden eagle. It's that resistance that causes the wings to flap constantly without stopping. Um, Zara's quite used to that. She's on a six foot ring perch. So whenever she goes down for a bath or to hop down, she has to fly back up vertically. These ring perches keep your hawk quite fit, especially if they bait a lot. Great for goshawks. Um, Zara doesn't really bait much at all. Right, we're going to get 
Zara ready to go and uh, I'll give you a quick clip of her flying and in action and how this worked. She only had it round the shoulder in the back and it just stopped it. Second slip of the day. Again, Zara's brought home the bacon and got a lot of food there for herself and the other birds for sure. Beautiful day to be out. Absolutely glorious. So we're We've fitted tail mounts to these two birds, these two Harris Hawks. We haven't got round to it, and these guys have been using leg mounts up till now. Um, every sort of mounting method for telemetry has problems and, and positives. Tail mount, single feather crimp times, you know what, that's what I've gone back to. But these boys are going a long way, and they certainly believe in double mounting if they can, double tagging. So Zara's having a backpack fitted, whereas Alan's having double, uh, a tail mount and a leg mount. So that's what we're doing right now, just fitting the backpack and they're going away to Yorkshire in a couple of days and these birds are hopefully, and the boys, going to have some really good sport on sort of rock rabbits where, you know, you're walking up the rabbits over sort of quite hilly terrain compared to Northamptonshire for sure. So that's what we're doing. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. Rather, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> So what we've got here is, I've always used Marshall backpacks. These guys using Forbes Falkery and Try and Error have been pretty good. Um, a few years ago, I tried a couple of the Chinese copies. They were rubbish, but we're still using decent Teflon ribbon here from Forbes Falkery, and that's the key really. These backpacks are brilliant. Kyle's using the, if you go on the, actually go on the Marshall website, Kyle's using the updated fit, fitting method, the original fitting method, Man, I was always cutting them off unless they were perfect. This method is a lot easier to get a good fit. So the, the new method of fitting the backpack is definitely better. Tail mounts, they can hit a wire fence, they can crash into cover, they can pull their tail mounts out. But everything has its own pros and cons as we said earlier. Something I've had great success with on the Micro Raptors is actually neck mounts. But again, they've got to, you've got to really research how to use a neck mount. I've seen people use hair ties as the band. That's, that's deadly for so many reasons. A loose band, deadly for so many reasons. But neck mounts are better than many people seem to think if used correctly, uh, certainly on the micros. But a good setup here, we've got a backpack, almost. We've got a tail mount, two transmitters, Brilliant signal up there, even if the bird's in wet grass and such like in undergrowth, you know, the transmitter's as high as it's going to get. A uh, little bit more fiddly. This took. <laughs> Wherever it is. Yeah, green this, mar this Marshall tail mount took yeah. 10 seconds to fit. This is taking a lot longer. Let her preen it. So it is, yeah, she's going to preen that in and Carl's going to do the final touches, bro. 
every way of fitting transmitters has pros and cons and that's what you've got to take away from this you decide what's best for your hunting and your bird or your falcon and your bird for sure mm. <clears throat> grumpy dog again enjoy the rest of the video so two of us with cameras failed to capture the previous flight which was honestly absolutely outstanding from zeus flat out all the way and in this one headwind really 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 windy flying into a headwind he did his usual thing he's always done this he goes up sails in the wind often pays off at very long range but he just looks pathetic and floppy and it's not because the previous flight tired him it is just his annoying approach in the wind other golden eagles get their head down like a goshawk and they fly with their bellies touching the ground under the wind zeus disappointing in this instance again